All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about functions with more than one variable. So functions with a greater than one variable. Um, and we're also going to talk about partial derivatives. So we've already talked about functions with more than one variable a, a bit because we've already graphed them. Um, so for instance, a function with one, more than one variable, we could say that at z equals x squared plus y squared. That's a function with two different variables in it. So that is a function of x and y. So we can always say that a function of x and y is equal to z. I think of that as the height. It's the height with some, well, it's the height, and then we also have like an x, y plane as the base. So this is a function with one more than one variable here that ends up looking like a paraboloid. All right, so there's just one example. Um, here's another example. We've seen some that we know how to graph. Here's an example of one that uh, we would need some software of some kind to graph it. But what I want to introduce on with this example is the domain of a function with more than one variable because domain used to be just x. It used to be the x's that you could plug into a function that would that work where there's no division by zero, no negative in a square root, and no zero or negative inside a natural log function. Um, but now the domains are not just x's, they're actually going to be x's and y's. Or we could even have a function with more than just x, y as variables. We could have we could have 10 variables in there and then the domain would be dependent on those 10 variables. But in this case, in this specific one, we're just going to look at the x's and y's and which x's and y's we could plug in uh, to make the function valid, to make it work. All right, so now we can't have division by zero. And notice we've got a division by zero issue in here. And we also can't have a negative and a square root. And I could take care of both of those things by saying that y minus x squared minus 3, that had better be greater than 0. Not greater than or equal to, because it can't equal 0. We can't have that division by 0, but it better be greater than 0. I'm going to rearrange this a little bit. I'm going to bring the x squared and the 3 over to the other side. And now I could graph this on just the xy plane because this one has just x's and y's in it. So x squared is a parabola plus 3 would raise the parabola 3. And now the question is, again, I'm looking for the x's and y's that I could plug in to this function that would make it work. So looking at this graph, my question is, are we looking at the x's and y's that are inside the parabola or the x's and y's that are outside the parabola? And so what I do is I pick a point. So I'm going to pick 0, 0. Seems pretty easy. So 0, 0, I'm going to plug that into the equation I just found, is 0 greater than 0 plus 3. No. It's not. Zero is not greater than three. And so that means that zero, zero is not in the domain. We couldn't plug in zero, zero. It wouldn't work. And so because it is not, neither is anything else that is outside the parabola. It's going to be everything inside that parabola. Now I want to do one other thing because Notice that there is no equal sign right here. So it can't be equal on the parabola. And unfortunately with this program, I don't think I can erase right now. Nope. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of make this a little bit bigger, but I'm going to make these lines dashed right here. So I'm actually making that parabola dashed to show that we can't pick a point on the parabola, but anything above it we could pick and it would work for that function. All right, so now let's talk about uh, partial derivatives. And what I want to do first is go back to Calc 1 for just a second. 
In Calc 1, we would have, I don't know, some function of x. I'm just going to graph it here. There's y, there's x, there's our function of x. And let's say if we go to x equals 1, so I don't know, there's x equals 1 right there. And if I go up to my graph and I draw a tangent line on that graph, the tangent line looks something like that. And notice on this, on now on this graph, if I trace the tangent line as x goes to infinity, what's going to happen is y is going to decrease along that tangent line. So as x goes to infinity, y ends up decreasing. And this gives us negative slope. All right, so that should all be fairly intuitive at this point. So now if we go to three dimensions, I'm going to draw a hyperbolic paraboloid. So this is the one where we've got one parabola that direction. We've got a long to short that way short to long that way, and then I've got to connect these. All right, so there's my hyperbolic paraboloid. Um, there's parabolas that go down that direction on it. Okay, so now on this hyperbolic paraboloid, if I go to the point 2, 2, so I'm going to go to the point 2, 2 on here. So I'm going to go 2 in the x and 2 in the y. And so I'm kind of I'm somewhere over here. I'm, I'm on that, I'm on this kind of sheet of paper that's folded oddly, say. And I'm kind of out in front of it and a little bit to the right. If I go there and I trace, um, I could trace parabolas in a couple different directions. So what I want to try to get across here is in Calc 1, as x went to infinity, we just looked at whether y decreased. But now we kind of have a decision to make because of our multiple variables. Are we going to go in an x direction or are we going to go in a y direction? So as x goes to infinity, does z decrease? So as x goes to infinity, what happens to z? Or as y goes to infinity, what happens to z? So we have a decision to make. And so these would be partial derivatives. A partial derivative is only in one direction. It's either in x or it's in y. So we could say, let's just look at the x direction. So let's just do one of these. So let's just do one. Let's see what happens as x goes to infinity. All right, so I need to look at this shape. Now, if I'm looking at x going to infinity, what I need to do is I need to keep y constant because I don't want y to go to infinity as well. So I want to keep y as y equals 2. And when y equals 2, I get this parabola. I'll do it in a different color here. I get this parabola right there. Right through that point 2, 2, right when y was equal to 2. So now, as x goes to infinity, so that's coming out of the paper at us, What's going to happen if we trace that parabola is that z is going to decrease. And so what this tells us is that the partial derivative with respect to x decreases. All right, so some of the key points in this. we kept x and y separate. If we look at the partial derivative with respect to x, we keep y as a constant. If we were to do this the opposite way around, we would have kept x constant. We have a different parabola on that shape. 
So if we were looking at the partial derivative with respect to y, then we would have to keep x constant. All right, so in the next one, I'm going to do some examples of actually finding partial derivatives. But before we do that, we need to talk about notation. So there's a couple different notations that are used. Del is used. That is not a D. That is called del. So del f del x. That would be the partial of f with respect to x. We could also write this with a little sub x. That's the notation that I prefer. Just again, it's easier to write out. It's a little bit simpler, but depending on the context of the problem, we might want to use one or the other. So both notations are used there. Um, and this would be if we're taking the derivative with respect to x, we would keep y constant. We could take the partial of f with respect to y. We could write this as f sub y, and in this one we would want to keep x constant. All right, let's do an example. So let's say that our function of x, y is 4x squared plus y to the fifth x cubed plus x sine of 3y. Okay, so in this case, let's do, let's just start with the partial of f with respect to x. Now remember that this means that y is constant. So every time we see a y, we're going to think of it as a number. If we see an x, we take a derivative like we would normally take a derivative. Okay, so on the first term, there's an x. Just take that derivative like you normally would. The 2 would multiply the 4, we get 8x. For this next term, we're going to take the derivative of that x part like we normally would. The 3 is going to come down in front, and then we're going to subtract 1. But remember that that y is constant. So a y to the fifth, that's a number. If it's a number, it stays out in front. And then we would take the derivative of just the x part. For this next part, the same thing is going to happen. This y is a number. That means sine of y is a number. So this sine of 3y is going to be a number that's just going to stay out in front when we take the derivative of x. Sorry, that was a y right there. And if we took the derivative of just x, if there was a number out in front, we would get just that number. So that's going to be left right as is. All right, let's do the next one. Let's keep x constant. So this is a whole separate problem. Now we're finding the partial of f with respect to y. So now if x is constant on this first part, the derivative of a constant is 0. So that part would just be 0. Plus, if we're taking the partial with respect to y on this second part, the x cubed is going to stay as is. But for the y part, 5 comes out in front. x cubed is a constant. I'm going to leave it there, so I'm putting all the constants out in front. And then I subtract 1 from the exponent of, of y. So I get 5x cubed y to the fourth. So in the next one, it's partial with respect to y. x is constant. I'm going to have to tell myself this every time I go through it. Which one's the number? Okay, so x is the number in this case, so it's just going to stay out in front. If I take the derivative of sine, I get so cosine, but I also need to multiply by 3, by the derivative of the inside part. All right, so there's both first derivatives. Now we can take second derivatives. So I could take either one of these and then take another partial derivative. So, I don't know, since, um, let's just find the partial of f with respect to y first and then x. That's what this is saying. It says y first and then x. So this is y first then x. Um, and I want to, um, let me clarify that that is 
we could write that with that del notation as the partial with respect to y of the partial of f with respect to x. And this could also be written as the second derivative of f with respect to, um, I think I mixed this up because we wanted to take y first, sorry, y first and then x. There we go. So this would be written, this is a little unintuitive. So the first one, this one is, is intuitive, y first, then x. This one's not quite as intuitive that you're taking y first and then x, but hopefully these parentheses help that you're doing parentheses first, y first, and then x. Okay, so now to do this, we're gonna look at this guy because we already did that y first. We already did y first, but now we're going to take the partial of this one with respect to x. So that means that now y is constant. So in this first one, 5y to the fourth is constant. I take the derivative of the x part, a 3 comes down in front, so that's going to give me now a 15 down in front. y to the fourth is constant. x, I now need to subtract 1. Because right, we're now doing the... <clears throat> we did the partial with respect to... Um, we're taking the partial with respect to x, so y is constant. So y stayed in there, I took the derivative with respect to x. Okay, good. Now this next one. We're taking the derivative with respect to x. So y is constant, so I've got a bunch of stuff that's constant in here, and if I take a derivative of just x, I get the number that's out in front, but in this case, the number is 3 cosine of 3y, because I'm thinking of that as a, as a number. And, you know, we could keep going with this with these partials. I could even take a third partial derivative. I could now take the partial of what I just found with respect to, I don't know, y. We could just keep going and pick different variables to take the derivative of. So I'm going to take what I just did, but take the derivative with respect to y. That means x is now constant. So if x is now constant, the 4 comes down in front. So let's say 15 times 4, that would be 60y cubed, but the x is constant this time. And then for this next one, we're doing the partial with respect to y. So x is constant. So if x is constant, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And I need another 3 out in front. So there would be the derivative of that second term. Okay, so there's a couple different partials. Hopefully you can get the idea here. Um, you just keep one of the variables constant as you take the derivative of the other one.